Hi everyone, I have a circuit and Tabata class for you today. It is the full length version, which means two circuits, two Tabatas, and a burpee finisher that is coming by request, okay? Uh, back in the, when I first started sharing these classes, I used to end every class with a 60 second burpee challenge. I kind of removed that because I was like, it's not really that necessary, but I got a request to bring it back. So I'll leave it up to you if you want to skip it at the end or do it. But for the bulk of class, we alternate between strength circuit and a Tabata. For the circuit, I'm going to give you four or five exercises, depending on if it's bilateral or unilateral, and you will go through those exercises three or four times, again, depending on if it's unilateral or bilateral. You do each exercise for 45 seconds and you have 10 seconds of transition time in between each exercise. Once you complete the whole set of exercises, you get a longer recovery before we start back from the top. For the Tabatas, I give you two exercises. You alternate between them using an interval structure of 20 seconds of work, 10 seconds of rest for eight times. So that's four minutes of work. In between each section, you get a full minute to recover. And during that time, I'll give you a preview of the upcoming exercises. So um, anytime we include jumping, which is mostly just during the Tabatas, I'll have a low impact modification playing on the screen. Otherwise, if you want to modify, just have lighter weights on hand and you can always drop down. So speaking of weights, for equipment, you're gonna need a single heavy weight. So I have a single 20, and I also have a 15 on hand in case I need to drop down. Now we'll start class with a guided warm up, focus on mobility and some dynamic movement to build some heat in the body, and we'll finish up class with a guided cool down. Let's get right into our warm up. We can start standing. And from here, I want you to interlace your fingers and flip the palms so they face forward. On an exhale, you're going to push the hands forward, keeping them parallel to the floor, and you're gonna round your back forward, opening up through that mid back. And then as you inhale, you're gonna stack the spine up tall, and you're gonna reach those arms overhead without flaring the ribs. So a little bit of shoulder opening here. Lower the arms down, exhale, push and round it forward. Inhale, stack it up, arms lift. Exhale, lower the arms, push them forward. And lift. Give me one more. And next time those arms are overhead, I want you to give me just a little side bend. Side to side, growing tall through center. We're going to unlock our fingers, keep the arms overhead in three, two, one. Unlock them, pivot so that the, or rotate so the palms are facing in towards each other. And we're going to do an arm sweep with a hip hinge. So the hips slide back as the arms sweep back. Hips come forward, stand up tall, arms overhead. We're gonna hold in our hinge position for some arm circles in three, two, one, hold in the hinge position and trace arm circles. I like to do arm circles in a hinged position because it just helps us establish that connection to our mid back. Maintain neutral through the spine, reverse direction of your circles. Hands are gonna com come to heart center in three, two, one. Hands to heart center, you're still in your hinge. I want you to bend and stretch through the knees. Bend, press the floor away. Now you may need, may need to widen your stance a little bit. We're gonna do forward fold to a squat in three, two, one, forward fold. So straighten out through the legs, fingertips to the mat. From here, we're gonna to start to bend into the knees, elongate through the spine, lift the chest, come into your squat. And then fingertips to the floor, straighten those legs, forward fold. Slowly move between these two. Next time you're in your forward fold, I want you to pause there. Keeping the legs straight, we're gonna inch arm ourselves out to a plank position. Give me world's greatest footsteps outside hand, hand twists open to the ceiling. We come through plank over to the other side. Once you've done once to either side, give me another inch arm from that plank position. So the hands walk in towards your feet and then you walk them out to plank. Repeat world's greatest. One more time, let's do that combo. We inchworm it in. We inchworm it out. World's greatest, once to either side. And then I want you to pause in your plank position. I want you to step, step your feet in so that the knees are bent under your hips in a bare plank position. And just hold and breathe here. We're long through the spine. Really push the mat away. Think of almost filling the space between your shoulder blades. We're gonna come into some dynamic movement in three, hips lift up in two, 
One, lift those hips up, walk your hands in towards your feet, roll it up to stand. We're gonna come into a squat to a hip circle. So we're gonna squat down and then one knee is gonna cross midline, circle it out wide, step low. Side to side. So we're gonna keep our warm up low impact today. We don't get to any jumping until our first Tabata. So we're not gonna include it just yet here. We're gonna find a wide stance, side lunge, reach and twist. Give me one more hip circle. And then step those feet out wide. So you're gonna side lunge to one side, opposite hand reaches towards that foot. And then you slide it across. We're gonna to pivot to the right. So we're in a lunge position with the right foot forward in three, two, pivot to the right. So right knee is bent, left leg long, arms reach overhead, knee drive that back knee in and out, hand to knee. Staying low on the right side, building some heat in the body. Give me eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Let's start from the top, squat to hip circle. So we're just gonna go through those one more time. When we do that knee drive, we'll be facing the other direction. Now I'll give you a preview of circuit number one. Give me one more circle. And then find that nice wide stance, side lunge, reach and twist. We'll pivot to the left in three, two, one, pivot to the left, arms reach overhead, drive that back, right knee in and out. Give me eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And before we get to our preview, I lied. I just wanna do one more thing. Grab your weight, hold it at your chest, and we're gonna do a good morning hinge to a squat. Feet about shoulders distance apart. So you're gonna hinge it forward, you're gonna bend through the knees, lifting the chest, drop to your squat, press your feet into the floor, stand. Anytime we're using heavy weight, I do like to include this at the end of the warm up, just so we kind of gradually transition our body into using a heavy resistance. Two more. All right, now here's your preview of circuit one. First exercise, we're gonna hold the weight at its end. It's going to be a hammer curl, squat, and then a wood chopper. So you bring the weight to outer hip, whoo, dynamic movement coming up to the top, hammer curl, repeat. Second exercise, we keep that rotation theme going, but we're in a split lunge position, two wood choppers. On the second one, you rack the weight on your shoulder and you give me a split lunge pulse, picking that back knee up off the floor and then lowering down. Third exercise, we take that weight up overhead. It's gonna be a windmill. And then we are going to pivot, lowering the weight as we come into a split lunge. We're gonna press that weight back up as we pivot open into our windmill. One of those, pivot. Final exercise from that split lunge position, it's going to be a single arm curl. And then it's gonna be a curl as you step to a squat, racking the weight, stand and thrust. Lower back to your squat, step it back, start from the top. So because we have unilateral work, we're gonna complete four sets of this one, 45 seconds on, 10 seconds of transition time in between uh, exercises, let's go. So I said 10 seconds transition time, but I'm actually gonna give us 15 seconds of transition time in between each exercise so that we have proper time to get set up correctly. All right, so we're gonna start standing, hold the weight at its end. It's gonna be that hammer curl, we squat, wood chopper. So exhale, curl it up, squat it down, bring it to the outside of your right hip, exhale, drive it to the top. Lower, give me one hammer curl. Drop to your squat, outer right hip, Whew. chop it to the top. Now when you do that hammer curl, I don't want you Whew. rocking your body weight forward and back. So really try to stand tall, Whew. make those biceps work. All right, now I want you to move the weight into your left hand, and I want you to come to a split lunge position, left foot is forward, right toes tucked under, underneath. Wrap your right fingertips over the left. It's gonna be two wood choppers, 
and then a split lunge pulse. So two wood choppers, rack the weight on the second one, give me a pulse of the legs. So when you do this wood chopper, when you come to the top like that, I want you to think of driving through your glutes. Squeeze the glutes. You'll notice there's a little hinge forward with my torso. Bring it to the top. Hinge and rotate. Okay, now come to stand, windmill. So we're going to have our left toes pointing forward, right toes pointing to the right. Bring that weight up and look at it, okay? It's gonna stay stacked over the shoulder. You can unlock through this right knee, you're gonna pop your left hip to the left. Windmill down, exhale, engage the obliques, bring yourself to the top, pivot to the right, split lunge, lowering the weight to your shoulder. Press it back up, come to your starting position. Use your right hand on the inside of the right thigh as kind of a guide. Open through the chest on that windmill. Woo, okay. So now we're gonna come into a split lunge position. Weight stays in your left hand, right foot is forward, square the hips. It's gonna be a curl, curl as you step to a squat, and then a thrust, open through the chest. So you're gonna curl, now curl, rack the weight, step to your squat, single arm thrust, reverse it back. Rest, okay, you have 30 seconds. So we're gonna repeat that whole thing, but we're gonna switch sides, okay? So we'll start back from the top. And when we get to the halfway point, I'll give you a full minute to recover. So we'll grab the weight by its ends, hammer curl. We do that wood chop, we'll bring it to the outside of this left hip. Open through the chest, brace through your core. Neutral pelvis, so gentle engagement through the glutes. Hammer curl, squat, outside of your left hip, would chop to the top. So it's, we kind of break it up into its parts on the way down, and then it's one powerful movement to the top. Don't sway back on that hammer curl, okay? Because if you do that, all the pressure is gonna go in your back. Okay, so now we're gonna come to that split lunge position. Grab the weight in your right hand, left will wrap over it. And then I want your right foot forward, left knee down, back left toes tucked. Two wood chops, split lunge pulse. One, two, pulse to the legs. Hinge and rotate. Hinge and rotate. As you come up, think glutes. Squeeze your bum.
Okay, come to stand. So the weight is in your right hand. We're gonna press the weight overhead. Right toes point forward, left toes point out to the left. You're gonna look up at that weight, stay open through the chest, slide the hip to the right, left hand on the inner left thigh for guidance. Windmill to the top, pivot into your split lunge, lower the weight, press it up. So you pivot that right foot, but your left foot is staying in the same position the whole exercise. Okay, keep the weight in this right hand. Left foot is going to be forward in the split lunge position. So a little hinge forward with the torso. Shoulders are over knee, square the hips. Curl, curl squat thrust. You curl it, curl rack the weight to your shoulder as you come to a squat, thrust overhead, back to the top. When you do that thrust, Fire through glutes, but also brace through the core. If you just squeeze your hips and thrust it forward, you're gonna have too much uh, pressure in that lower back. Take a full minute. All right, I'm gonna go through this circuit twice more, once on either side. The second circuit, we just go through it three times, but there are five exercises. So take an assessment. If you need to drop down in weight, do it. I care more about form than you going absolutely as heavy as possible. You wanna gradually increase your weight where you can do so safely. Okay, all right, so you're gonna be mirroring me. I'm gonna grab that weight, holding it at its ends. Hammer curl, squat, wood chop. So neutral through the pelvis, so active through the core. Roll the shoulders back so you're open through the chest. Let's go. Hammer curl, squat, bring it to the outside of your right hip. Wood chop to the top. Notice if when you do that hammer curl, you're swaying your body forward and back. I want you to stay tall, okay? So your core needs to be really active. Make the biceps work. Rest. So I want you to grip the weight in your left hand. Come to that split lunge position. Your left foot is forward, right knee is down, tuck your right toes under, wrap the right hand over the left. Two wood choppers, split lunge, pulse with the legs. On that second wood chopper, you rack that weight, split lunge, pulse. If it bothers your knees to do the split lunge pulse, you can just keep your knee down the whole time and just give me wood choppers. I want you exhaling as you come up and bring that weight to your shoulder. Your torso is hinging and rotating. Hinge and rotate to the right. All right, so weight is gonna stay gripped in your left hand. So our left toes point forward, right toes point to the right, feet are about shoulders width apart or a smidge wider, but not too wide. Press the weight overhead, look at it, stay open through the chest. You're gonna pop your hip to the left 
as you slide the right hand down that right thigh. Exhale, engage through the left side obliques to bring yourself to the top and go into that split lunge, pivot. Right foot stays planted. It's the left foot that will pivot, lifting the heel and then dropping it down. Can't emphasize enough how important it is to look at the weight when you do the windmill, okay? That's how it's gonna stay stable right over your shoulder. If you look away from it, it's gonna be harder to stabilize it. Okay, final exercise this side. Weight is still in our left hand, right foot is forward in that split lunge position. Now we just have the weight on one side, but I don't want you to rotate open towards it. So square your chest, square your hips. Curl, curl, rack the weight, squat thrust overhead. Almost there. Oh, and rest. Okay, you have 30 seconds. If you need longer, you can always hit pause on the video. We got just one more round to go, okay? We got this. So you're going to grab that weight by its ends, standing up tall, neutral through the pelvis, brace through the core, open through the chest. You'll mirror me. So we're going to do the hammer curl. You're going to squat down, bring the weight to the outside of your left hip. Exhale, brace through the core, power to the top. Hammer curl, wood chop. We break the movement into its parts on the way down, squat, and then twist with the weight. One fluid, powerful movement to the top. Exhale, bring that weight up. All right, now you're gonna grip the weight in your right hand, right foot forward, left knee down, and then wrap the left hand around the right so it can easily come off and on. It's going to be the two wood choppers and the split lunge pulse. You're mirroring me still. Let's go. Hinge and rotate, hinge and rotate, legs pulse. So as you bring that weight to your shoulder, really think contract through the left side glutes, contract through the left side glutes. All right, keep the weight in your right hand. Right toes point forward, feet about shoulders distance apart or a smidge wider. Left toes point to the left, press that weight overhead, look at it. When we do that windmill, you can unlock through the knees. You're especially going to bend into uh, the left knee. Slide the hips to the right. Exhale, use the right side obliques to bring yourself to the top. We pivot into that split lunge. You exhale as you pivot back to the starting position, thrusting that weight overhead. Compound movements is kind of the theme throughout this class today. So we got legs working, we got obliques working, we got shoulder stability being challenged.
Whew. All right, one more exercise to get through. You got it, okay? Weight is still in that right hand. Left foot is forward in that split lunge position. Square the hips, the shoulders hinge forward a little bit. So shoulders are over that front knee. And let's do it. 45 seconds, you curl. Curl, rack the weight to a squat, stand and thrust. Remember what I was talking about that I've mentioned a couple times as you stand and thrust, you fire through the glutes, but also brace through the core. So almost think of coming to a vertical plank. Don't just thrust your hips forward and dump into that lower back area. And you're done. Okay, take a minute. I'm going to show you our Tabata. Okay, so for our Tabata, first exercise, you're going to have the weight rush and twist. To modify that one, you could have heels on the ground or you could do it body weight only, just bringing hand to outer hip. Second exercise is a funky one that is not going to be for everyone, but I have lots of options for you. So it's going to be a rolling like a ball to a squat jump. Lots of ways to change this one. You could just do a squat jump and forget about the rolling like a ball. You, if you want to keep it low impact, you could also just do an air squat without the jump. Now I'm going to give you an alternate move if you want to try it, but kind of dial it down. And if you're having trouble getting from this position up to your feet, you're going to do a rolling like a ball to a reverse tabletop lift like that hips up and down. You would roll it and lift the hips like that. I'll have that modification playing as we go. But remember, you could also just give me jump squats, air squats, kind of pick your poison on this one. All right, 20 on 10 off. Let's do it. Okay, so we're gonna start with that Russian twist. So you're gonna grab the weight at its ends, go body weight only to modify. You're gonna come behind your sitting bones. You can keep your heels down as another way to modify, or you're gonna bring them to a balance. And we're gonna twist side to side, bringing that weight, outer hip, outer hip. Let's go. Don't just bring the arms to the side, twist through your mid spine. Twist, twist. All right, now get that weight all the way out of the way, okay? I don't want there any to be any risk of you uh, hitting it on this next one. So we're balancing behind our sitting bones, slight tuck of the chin, rolling like a ball up into our squat jump. You're just rolling to your upper shoulder blades. Do not roll onto your neck, that's very important. Rest. Okay, down to the mat, Russian twist. 10 seconds isn't a lot of time to transition. Let's go. Rest, get that weight out of the way, okay? Balancing behind our sitting bones, gazes at the knees, little tuck of the chin, roll back, squat jump. Now when you do that roll, I don't want you to kick your shins up to build momentum. I want the movement to come from core control. So you don't have to roll back super far. Again, you are not coming onto your neck. If this move isn't working for you today, do the mod, rest. Okay, quickly grab that weight. Brush and twist, let's go. Weight goes out of the way. Balancing behind the sitting bones, rounded scoop through the spine like a C shape. We'll roll back and forward to our feet. Let's go, squat jump. So big core focus in this Tabata.
Ooh, all right, grab that weight, final set, you got this. One more time each exercise. Let's go Russian twists. Okay, weight off to the side. Final 20. Let's go. So I want you to inhale as you roll back, exhale it forward. Rest. I almost didn't get up on that one. <laughs> All right, you have a minute to catch your breath. I'm going to show you your second circuit. Okay, five exercises, three times through. To start, it is going to be a single leg deadlift. From that single leg deadlift, you step in a squat and you do a squat pulse as you switch which hand has the weight and you go into your single leg deadlift on the other side. So we're moving side to side, switching the hand. Second exercise, kind of similar idea. You're in a side lunge position. It's a row and then you slide, switch. Row, other side, slide, switch. From there, you're gonna hold the weight at its ends. In a hinged position, you're gonna give me two rows. You're gonna hold the second row. You're gonna to drop to a squat, kind of bringing that weight to your chest. Pull the elbows back as you come into your hinge, two rows. Final two exercises are going to be tough, okay? First one, it's going to be a snatch and then a squat jump, a snatch instead of squat jump. If you're uncomfortable bringing the weight overhead, do a high pull instead of a snatch. And if you wanna keep it low impact, do an air squat instead of a squat jump. I'll have those modifications playing. Fifth and final exercise, it is gonna be a squat clean, and then it's going to be a clean to a lunge, clean to a lunge other side. Squat clean, lunge clean, lunge clean. All right, 45 seconds in exercise, 15 seconds to transition in between, let's do it. All right, so it's gonna be that single leg deadlift, squat pulse, switch. So I would hold the weight like this, okay? Doesn't matter what foot starts forward. We'll start by coming into the single leg deadlift. So single leg deadlift, now come to a squat, pulse, switch hands, deadlift other side. Squat, switch. So a bit of a balance challenge here. I'm switching and coming into the deadlift as one movement. Oh, okay, so from here, similar idea because we're switching side to side. We're gonna have a wide stance and a side lunge. It's gonna be a row, row switch other side. So send the hips back, hinge forward, brace to the core, open through the chest. Row, row switch, row, slide and switch. Keep reaching your hips back. Okay, so from here, we're going to, okay, <laughs> hold the weight at its ends. I'm like, what are we doing? Hold the weight at its ends, we're gonna come to a hinge position. Slide the hips back. So it's gonna be two rows. On the second one, you hold it into your chest and drop to a squat. Row, row, hold it as you drop to a squat, bring that weight under your chin. Pull the elbows back, slide the hips up, you're in your hinge. Two rows, hold it. So two exercises in a row, really three, where we're working in this hinge. So your mid-back may be starting to talk to you. Posterior chain has to work on these. All 
Okay, so from here, you don't need a dish towel. I'm just using it for some extra padding um, so it doesn't thud. Snatch, squat jump, snatch other side, or high pull, okay? You gotta get low through the legs to grab the weight. Don't round forward, that's so important. Snatch it, bring it down. Squat jump, other side. That snatch starts with the hip hinge, with the hips driving forward. Okay, so now we got clean. So you're gonna stand the weight up on its end. Squat clean, and then clean to a lunge, clean to a lunge. Let's go. Squat clean, return it to the ground. Now clean it as you step to a lunge. Bring it back, other side. Other foot steps back and forward. Start with your squat clean. Open through the chest. Oh, woo. Take 45 seconds, okay? First round done, two more to go. Okay, so grab the weight in one hand, single leg deadlift, squat, pulse, switch deadlift, other side. Let's go. Come into that single leg deadlift, land in your squat. As you pulse, switch which hand has the weight, kick that leg back, you're in your deadlift, other side. Squat, pulse and switch. Try to kind of find a rhythm here, but you're not going so fast that you're flailing everywhere, okay? I want you to be able to stabilize. Use your breath with every exhale. Think brace to the abdominal wall. Okay. So similar idea going where we switch side to side. We're gonna find that side lunge position. Row, row, switch and slide. Let's go. So when you're in the side lunge, think of having your that side of your body, whatever knee is bent, up against a wall. So think hip, knee, ankle, kind of all in line. So you're thinking of sending the hips back you're not trying to get your feet out as wide as possible. So you might need to even bring your feet in a little bit if you can't get that hip all the way over to find that alignment. Okay, so now we're gonna grab the weight by its ends. It'll be two rows in that hinged position. We'll drop to a squat. There's a reason I'm having us do all these hinged exercises before getting to the snatch. All right, let's go row. Row, hold the weight, drop to the squat as you do. The weight comes under your chin. Pull the elbows back as you slide the hips back into that hinge. So the basis of a snatch, it is first that hip hinge, the hips drive 
forward. And then when the weight gets to be about hip height, that's when the elbow pulls and you draw the weight overhead. But it has to start with that drive of the hip. So we're building up to that. I'm never gonna teach a circuit where a snatch is the first exercise. Okay, so let's get to that snatch. If you're uncomfortable with the snatch, just do a high pull, okay? So the weight doesn't go overhead, it would just come up to your shoulders. So start in a squat position with that weight in between your feet. Hips are back, deep bend of the knees, grab that weight, drive the hips forward, yank it overhead. It's a powerful move to the top. One snatch, one squat jump or air squat. Now when that weight goes overhead, you better brace through the core, okay? Okay, final exercise, gonna be that clean, clean to a lunge, clean to a lunge. So stand the weight up on its end, find that same squat position we were doing with that snatch, open through the chest, and let's go. You clean it, when you bring it back to the floor, you then clean as you step to a lunge. Clean as you step to a lunge other side. Oh, take 45 seconds to rest. Man, my legs. Okay, so we just gotta go through this one more time, okay? And then you're done with your circuit work. We got this. If you need to go a little lighter with the weight, go for it. Okay, so we're gonna grab that weight in one hand. Whatever foot is gonna be planted for the deadlift, opposite hand has it. I'm sure you figured that out by now by round three. Single leg deadlift, land in your squat. Squat pulse as you do, you switch the weight, other leg kicks back, deadlift. Trying to make it this sort of fluid, controlled movement, shifting stability from side to side. I'm exhaling as I kick that leg back, come into the deadlift. That helps with balance. Inhale as I step to the squat. All right, now we'll find that wide stance, but not so wide that your knees and hips can't get out as wide as the foot, okay? So we'll find that side lunge position, send the hips back, lengthen through the spine, open through the chest, active through the core, you row, row, slide and switch.
All right, now we're gonna change our grip on the weight. So we'll grab it by its ends. We find the hinge position, so we slide our hips back, unlock through the knees, but it's not a squat. Row, the second row, you hold it into your chest, drop to a squat, bring that weight under your chin. Pull the elbows back as you lift the hips and slide them back to your starting hinge position. Okay, these last two exercises are tough, but we got it. Again, you don't need the dish towel. I just have downstairs neighbors, so I like it for a little extra padding so there's less thumping. Snatch, squat jump, or high pull, air squat. Get low through the legs, let's go. Keep it up. Oh, okay. We have one more exercise to get through. We can do it. We're gonna stand that weight up on its end. Low squat position so that we can stay open through the chest. If you round your shoulders forward, you're gonna hurt your back. We squat clean and then we lunge clean. Oh man, I'm slowing down. Oh, okay, we're almost there. Oh, done. Oh man, all right, take a minute to recover. I'm gonna show you our final Tabata. Okay, for our Tabata, first exercise, similar to the first Tabata, first move we use the weight, second is body weight. We're gonna do a dumbbell swing, just like a kettlebell swing, but with a dumbbell, you hold it by its end, okay? Now, if you're uncomfortable doing the swing, you can hold the weight at your chest and you can just give me a hip hinge instead. Second exercise, body weight only. Two jumping jacks, two squat jacks. So up high, down low, just cardio move, bring the heart rate up, get nice and out of breath by the end, okay? If you wanna modify that one, keep it low impact, step jack, step jack, step to squat, step to squat. I'll have those mods playing. 20 on, 10 off, let's go. So we're gonna enter into our dumbbell swings the same way you would a kettlebell swing. It's gonna be on the ground. You start by swinging it back, then you come up, okay? That is the safe way to enter in to a swing like this. So I'm gonna put it on its end. Open through the chest, start by swinging back. Let's go, drive those hips. Brace to the core. So the modification playing the only difference is what our arms are doing and where the weight is, okay? Our body is looking the same, doing that hinge. Hips slide back, hips drive forward. Okay, and rest. Actually, I'm gonna put this out of the way. All right, two jumping jacks up high, two squat jacks down low. Let's go. Get low, low. Rest, okay, grab that weight, 
Again, it's a quick transition, but I still want you to transition the safe way. So start with it there, find your low squat and go back and then up. Okay, rest, weight out of the way. Two jumping jacks, two squat jacks. So let's go. Because the legs got such a challenge in that second circuit, I didn't want this Tabata to be like more intense leg stuff. So we're having more of a cardio focus here. Not that the legs aren't working though. Rest, okay, just like that, halfway there. Grab that weight, set it up, find that squat position. Gonna grab the weight at its ends. Start by swinging it back. Let's go, as it comes forward, fire through the glutes, brace through the core. Hips slide forward, hips slide back. There's bending to the knees because they are unlocking for sure as the hips slide back, but it's not a squat. So think back and forward, not up and down so much. Rest, weight goes down. Let's go to jumping jacks up high, two squat jacks down low. Okay, final set. Grab that weight, stand on its ends. Go. Notice the weight is just coming to about chest height. I'm not really pulling with the arms. It's the power of my hips that bring the weight up. Okay, weight goes down. We're done with the weight for the day. Final 20 seconds in this Tabata. Let's go. Maybe fingertips tap the floor. Maybe you don't get that low, that's fine. Oh, done. Okay, you have 60 seconds to catch your breath. Now, this is by request. We're gonna finish with a 60 second burpee challenge. How it works is you do any version of burpees you want. I'm gonna do chest to floor. You could do push up burpees, or you could just jump to a plank to keep it low impact. You could step step instead of jumping. So any version of burpees you want, 60 seconds, you count your rep number. Only person you're competing with is yourself. Next time you do this class or another class with one of these finishers, you see if you can match or beat that number, okay? Depending on the type of burpee variation you're doing, the number goal is gonna change, so I'm not even gonna give you one, okay? I just want you to push your hardest. I will tell you what I get, though, if I remember to count, okay? <laughs> oh, okay, 60 seconds, then we cool down. All right, count in your head. Let's go. I got 14. Oh. 
So remember your number. And in the future, if you do this class again, try to beat it. Oh. These full length circuit and Tabata classes are tough and they are definitely not for every day. I can't make that clear enough. Um, classes like this, every workout you do should not be this long and intense and hard, okay? Whoo, a couple times a week, great. Not every day. All right, let's cool it down. We can start with a standing quad stretch. You're gonna grab one foot in your hand, pull the heel in towards your bum, drop your tail on down. Back when I first started sharing workouts on my blog, so that's a decade ago now, which is crazy. All I shared was like hit. Boot camp, hit, everything was intense, hard, as hard as it could be. Release that foot, take it over to the other side. Because I genuinely like those kind of workouts. But after a while of doing just that kind of working out, my body was not feeling its best. That's why recently I've started incorporating more and more Pilates, more foundational movements, more low impact movements. And it has made such a big difference. And it makes me feel better when not now I do do these intense classes because I put in that foundational work as well. Release that foot. Okay, let's take a hamstring stretch. One heel plants about six inches in front of the other, but you're not walking on a tightrope, hips distance apart. Slide the hips back. Maybe you grab the foot. Maybe you bring your hands to the thigh of the bent knee, whatever works for you. Come up other side. Coming up, we're gonna kind of finish full circle, similar to what we did in the warm up. Interlace your fingers, press them, press them forward. Round forward, opening up through your mid back. And just breathe into that space between your shoulder blades. And then we're gonna stack the spine up tall, bring those arms overhead. And a little side stretch over to the right. And over to the left. Coming up tall, release the fingers. Now you're gonna interlace them behind your back, press the knuckles away, and lift the arms up for a stretch across the front of your shoulders and chest. Releasing the fingers, let's finish with one deep breath together. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, let it go. Woo, and that is your class. Awesome job today. I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.